Hi, another video. Today we're talking about uh, limits that may not exist or do not exist and limits that fail to exist. Still chapter 1.2 in finding limits graphically and uh, numerically, as you can see. So uh, a couple of examples if we first have to understand when a limit may not exist. Well, or a limit that fails to exist, how does that happen? Well, remember that for a limit to exist, the L value, the L value, right, that Y value must be the same from both sides of that X of C. So as X approaches some C again, we have to make sure that it comes from both sides. It can't be from two, two different uh, pieces there and go to two different Y values. If it does, then that may or does not exist. Okay, so let's look at an example of this situation where we do have two different C values. So example number one, look at a function, the limit as X goes to zero will equal some L value, right? So let's see if we can find the same Y value, that's the L, uh, as X approaches some C. Well, in this case, C is zero. So we see that if we put in values of positive one, we're going to get positive one over one. This is the absolute value of x over x. And we see that all those cases, then we will end up with uh, two over two, which is still one, so the y values are one. In the case where we start to put in negative numbers, well, the negative is going to be, uh, in the denominator will stay negative, but anytime we put a negative in this absolute value, then we're gonna get a positive. So a positive over negative will maintain negative and we end up with uh, values in the y that are at negative one. Even though it's undefined at zero, because if we put zero in for x, uh, it might be zero over zero. You think, well, zero, zero over zero might be one. Well, since it's a zero in the denominator, it's still undefined. So that's why we have the two holes there at when x is equal to zero. However, but because they're coming from two, two different sides and they're not the same value of y's, now we cannot say that the limit exists. So for this, the L does not exist, does not exist for that particular situation. Let's look at another example. This one, um, and this again is because we have different right and left behavior, different right and left behavior, okay? Uh, another, another one would be where we have a situation like is in the limit as x goes to zero of one over x squared. What is that L value? Is there the same value for those? When we graph this function, these x values are going to uh, continue as we get uh, negative, right, It'll continue to go down, and as we get closer and closer and closer to one, remember, these small values, when they're in the denominator, they actually make, the, uh, make this flip, and it becomes a very big number, right? So one over 0 .001 squared is gonna be a bigger number. Same thing here, when we have positive numbers, then we get this way, and so what happens is, both of the, both of the, uh, values of y keep increasing from the right or from the left, and they don't ever match. So in that case, we have unbound behavior, and we have to say, that the, again, the limit does not exist. DNE does not exist. All right, final example for this video. Uh, this is a situation where we find a function the limit as x goes to zero of sine of one over x. Gotta remember those trig functions, right? What is the L value? Does it come out to be the same value when it approaches from the left and to the right? Is it, are we matching it some, some y value? Well, we can see that this function is what we call oscillating, right? It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There is nothing where it seems to conclude that it's going to be meeting at the same point. If I come this way, I have to go through all that in order to get to a similar value. And in this case, in the oscillating behavior situation, once again, that L does not exist. All right, I hope that helps. 
uh, when you're looking for limits and some of the situations where uh, the, it fails the test or the limit does not exist.